Obviously, but 20 rounds of a boxing match, and the winner is nobody. Was I'm drawn. guessing. I'm guessing they were a little sore, a little swollen uh, after that. 20 rounds of getting punched on. I would imagine it is 8:40 right now. Welcome back to CW Iowa Live, Lou, along with meteorologist James Peterson, along with bankruptcy attorney Michael Jenkins in studio with us right now. And uh, we, you always learn something, James, when Michael's here, because uh, some things you might not have thought of or something you might have thought of, but you didn't realize how bad of a situation it could become. And that's the reason that you are here talking about one of the biggest mistakes <coughs> people make before filing bankruptcy. You know, uh, we see lots and lots of people come in and um, during our appointments, we review people's pay stubs, see where the, you know what type of pay they're getting and what their take home pay is. And it's very common at most employers that people will be participating in a 401k plan because that basically is their retirement program. <clears throat> and so they're contributing uh, a certain percent to their pay and uh, they accumulate money. And um, when they get into a bind, we see over and over again, rather than look at other alternatives to uh, take out loans or pay back their credit cards that they're accumulating or maybe fix make repairs on their home they decide to just use their 401k retirement as a bank and so they'll take out a loan because a lot of times your 401k will have tens of thousands of dollars in it because you've been contributing mm -hmm. for quite a long time that's right and you got a friendly banker yourself so <laughs> they want, you, you, you can't probably get turned talk down. them into giving you a loan yeah you can't get turned down yeah and the interest well, rates through you <laughs> and you and the and interest me. rates are pretty good. Mm -hmm. So um, we see these and people will still be contributing their three to six percent into their 401k. But then you see these loans and so you, you, you got money going back out to pay it back. And it really hurts your retirement plan and people just don't realize it. And I tell my clients just so they you know, understand that they don't do this in the future uh, when their bankruptcy is all over with. Um, you know, I don't want them to get into these bad habits again, you know, three or four years later. And so they open up their eyes and they go, wow, I didn't realize that uh, what we're doing would harm our retirement so badly. And so it really does. Um, an example of a common situation would be uh, a person um, has accumulated maybe $10,000 in credit card debts and we'll call him Joe Desperate. And so he wants to get those paid off so he takes out a loan against his 401k plan, and now he's got a debt back to himself. Okay, now you cannot just take this money out. You have to repay the money back to your 401k. Right, Mo most 401ks have rules, and to actually just cash out parts of it while you're working there, they're really strict, and um, there's usually two or three reasons they let you um, actually take a distribution, but they're pretty stringent, and it's, uh, Sometimes to buy a home, uh, that'll be a use, and, and so, or to save your home if it's in foreclosure. Again, they, te they tend to be directly connected to uh, your home. But uh, other than that, uh, the loans typically don't really have any reasons. Uh, you can just borrow out the money, and so people do. Mm -hmm. And um, it hurts the long-term growth of the retirement, uh, assuming that a person is going to be putting into this retirement for a lengthy period of time, either at this employer or if they go to another employer and just move their money, which is uh, a common thing that people can mm -hmm. do to their new 401k, um, <clears throat> they can accumulate tons of money. But when you borrow money out of it, you're basically shooting holes and it essentially is leaking uh, a growth and you hinder its growth. Because that money cannot work for you anymore. Well, it works for you, but it's working for you at a very <laughs> low amount of return. So when you take out a loan, that loan is basically an asset in your 401k plan, just like the rest of your money is gonna be in stocks or mutual funds. This is another type of asset, except it pays badly. So if your loan is 3%, which would probably be a fairly common rate, on that $10,000, uh, over five years, the interest you will have paid would be about $800. I actually kind of calculated it last night on an amortization schedule. Okay, so the, the, the money you would, if you would have borrowed 10 grand is what you're talking 10, about? 10,000 bucks. You'd have borrowed $10,000 and you are paying it back with 3%. At five years interest in five years you'd be paying back ten thousand eight hundred dollars that's right at the conclusion of this so that ten thousand eight hundred dollars is back into your account then. right okay so you've made eight hundred dollars on your ten thousand and if the stock market had uh, done 
pretty well that year, um, and let's just say it made 12% with all your other money, and that isn't an unrealistic return. We've had those kind of returns many different times during uh, the last five to 10 years. Then you would have made in one year $1,200 on that 10,000 bucks in one year. So that 1,200 would have continued to grow the next year at whatever returns you would have gotten. And over that five year period, that money could have developed into several thousand dollars versus this paltry $800 <laughs> that you made in return from that loan. By paying it back. By paying it back. Right. And if you look over 20 to 25 years, that money could have turned into $70,000 if it just not And, and Michael Jenkins, how would you know that, for an example? Can you tell that story? Because this is amazing, because a lot of people have exactly the amount of money that you and I were discussing before the cameras came on. Right. Okay, can you tell that story? Well, from just personal experience, way back in the late 80s, early 90s when for, uh, IRAs were just sort of beginning. Getting started, yeah. Um, I put money in at a very low rate. Uh, you could only put $2,000 a year in. And so for a few years uh, I did that and then some of the tax laws and things changed. And so over a period of three years I put $4,000 into, I was just beginning, into one of these funds and never touched it uh, after that. Never contributed any more into that particular one. Because the circumstances changed and so you did not contribute to that anymore. That particular That thing. particular one anymore. And, okay. and it just sat there and, and it's grown uh, leaps and bounds and uh, in, in a manner that I described before and so you know without even touching it and you just kind of forget about it and uh, in, you know if you take 10,000 <laughs> which is was a two and a half times the money I had in there um, you, you would just be losing the kind of money I mentioned. You could lose seventy, eighty thousand dollars wow. over a twenty period, twenty year period, uh, if you just left it alone. So that's why it's really bad to borrow out your money. And so we have clients that don't just do this one time. We'll see loan two and loan three, and they're all coming out, and then they're also contributing their three to six percent so they can get their employer match, and so they're putting that in. And so we've had people come in where in the course of a month. They've got $1,000 a month coming out of their check to go into these 401k loans and their contribution. Well, now they can't pay the regular stuff. They're, they're having a tough time making their house payment and their car payment. Because you said these, with, with the 401k, it's an auto payback. They don't have a choice. It's automatically deducted off of their paycheck to go to back reimburse. into their 401k to reimburse their 401k. Right, as long as, you're, as long as you're employed to that company, you don't have the option of going, oh, I need to take a month off. That The loan part, those are being wow. paid back and you don't have any options. You know, if you just had credit cards, you go, oh, I can't pay this month. Well, we'll try to figure it out and get it back with it the next month. Now, is there a term for people that are in this situation? Well, it's my term. <laughs> I call them 401k <laughs> poor. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other sad thing is people, they've gone and paid off their credit cards with the money. Well, they haven't changed their spending habits or their conduct. So two three years later, probably three is not very likely, it's probably two years later, they're at 10,000 again on credit card debt or, and probably more and so wow. they, they're in the same situation and so they really haven't changed their habits, they've ruined their 401k or harmed it substantially by doing this mm -hmm. so they just know you shouldn't take out 401k loans, it's not a good idea um, it's not going to really save you from uh, later on having to file bankruptcy and the other really bad thing is your 401k retirement money is a protected commodity. Uh, creditors can never access it to collect their debts. In a bankruptcy setting, the bankruptcy court can't get to your 401k money. They're exempt or protected assets. So I don't really understand why people are going into protected funds to pay off things like credit cards and other loans wow. that someday, if it had to, could go away in a bankruptcy wow. without depleting your own financial resources. I think, you, I think you touched on it. They don't change their habits. Desperate measures, they need more money and it's act, they have access they have to access it to instead it. of changing the, those habits that, that got them there in the first place. Okay, so the moral of this story, Michael Jenkins? The moral is do not take money out of your 401k <laughs> to pay back other debts or fix up your house or do other things like that. And if you're in a situation that might need some rearranging, some things like that, this is the guy that you want to call. This guy has more knowledge than you can ever imagine. And uh, Michael, what's the best way to get a hold of you? You can reach me at 255-1855 or you can find me on the internet at www.iowa-bankruptcylaw.com. Again, don't touch the 401k. <laughs> don't 
touch the 401k. Say it to yourself over and over again. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. We will be right back. It is 10 minutes mm. before 9 o'clock right now. And when we come back, it will be time for totally serious news, including uh, some reasons why you might want to skip the holidays and just go on vacation. Some pretty good reasons. We'll give you those next on CWI Live.